Hey y'all, it is a wonderful, beautiful day out here. Late fall, it's freezing cold in Arkansas for us. All you up north are probably laughing at me. But it is getting down to uh, the low 20s here at night. Uh, tonight will be the lowest one yet. It'll be 23 is what they're predicting. That's cold for us southerners. We're used to sweating and humidity and it is dry and freezing. So that means it is time to harvest the garden one final time. I'm just so blessed and thankful. It's November 30th uh, when I'm shooting this that I still have things to pick. I think that is so crazy. This is really our first hard freeze. We've had a couple frosts, but for all intents and purposes, this is our first freeze, November 30th. That just blows my mind. We've got ripe tomatoes, we've got peppers, uh, squash, all kinds of things. I've been able to grow summer squash up until today. It's looking pitiful today, but. So let's get busy. We're gonna harvest a few things that uh, I'm probably gonna cook tonight, and I might show you some animals along the way. So let's go. So I picked these earlier. These are buttercups. These are probably my favorite winter squash. I love these. They make an excellent thick, just creamy soup for the winter that I really love. So I'm picking these up and I'm gonna pick a few more things. So you can see last night finally did this squash plant in and tonight we'll really finish it off. These are um, from Haas Tools. I've loved these. You can see it's almost December and this was still covered. It's done really, really well. Well, we actually were able to get away for a day or two and camp in our camper with some friends and everything went really well while we were gone. It's always a toss up to figure out are the animals going to behave and stay in. They hardly ever get out, but I guarantee you if you go somewhere, they will know it. Even if you feed them or leave arrangements, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you have a farm sitter, they will get out and the sheep did so i've been babying these cabbages all fall and i had one that was getting really big and then the rest that were later but that didn't matter they were still gonna produce eventually because i was gonna cover them with the frost blanket and the sheep got out so that was my biggest one it is it's been nipped off it's pretty sad looking this one I may stick back in. You can see its roots here. It's just, it's been completely pulled up. So, yep, they made it up here. I can see little sheep evidence up here. This has been a very bright spot this fall. This is actually just ground cover. It's mustard greens, tillage radishes, and clover. And we got all that from Haas Tools. It has been beautiful. It's been, it's been neat to watch because you can see as everything else is turning brown, it has been like neon green. One thing I did want to mention to you guys, if you, I don't know how well y'all can see it behind me. I'll probably have to show it on a brighter, sunnier day, but right behind me, there's a bit of a yellow orange strip. And then you can see the, all the rest of this, how deep green it is. Well, that is right where a strip of billboard was laid for a couple years and we planted in it like ground cover. It did absolutely amazing at suppressing the weeds. We were very pleased with it. It held up really well. It, it, the plants grew fine in it, all those things. But this last year, we got actual legitimate ground cover that we'd been wanting to try from Grower Solution and it just, did amazing compared to the billboard and now we're kind of seeing the places the billboard was 
this ground cover has orangey yellow spots where this ground cover is <clears throat> where this ground cover is just not growing as well. And across the fence over that way, that's actually where we grew sweet potatoes and it's the same way. Part of that section, uh, that's actually planted in turnips right now. And the part of that over there that had billboard where the sweet potatoes were planted, it's brown as well and the rest of it is green and thriving so I don't know if that is leaching something into the soil uh, or what's going on there but you can see right over in this area that is where our tomatoes were planted um, and I actually had broccoli and cauliflower I had several, I had a couple different pieces of legitimate ground cover and um, it's not done that at all so it's only the places I don't know how well y'all can see it. It's only the places the billboards were, not the places the ground cover was. So that's a bit concerning. Kind of think we are done using billboards as ground cover. Um, I just don't want to be putting plastics and inks and I don't know what all in the soil. So we went the cheap way and I think we learned a lesson. So now that we have had our first hard freeze and it looks like it's gonna do it for the whole rest of the week, I can continue eating out of all that ground cover out front. Uh, that's, you saw me pick some of those radishes. I've got a supper plan for those. And then over by the bees where I showed you where the sweet potatoes were planted, that's planted in turnips, turnip greens. So I'll be eating out of those too. Those are really to draw nutrients up out of the soil. So then we can let that add back to the soil to help next year's garden but i can also eat off them as well so now i'll transition into here and this is what i wanted this greenhouse for this is what ben built this for is so that we could have fresh greens and salads and things all winter long and not have to go to the grocery store if we don't want to even in a year that's not 2020 we like to buy a lot of staples and cook things here at home and then uh, just go to the store for things we can't grow or that we just want to uh, have on hand. And so this allows us to do that even more because we can have a fresh salad, we can have fresh greens. And so we kind of let this get away from us a bit because we've been still focused on outside, but it's about time to clean this back up, get it uh, going again and lettuces and things like that. And so let's look around in here. So some parts have gotten a little out of control, but you can see I've got a lot of this beautiful colored Swiss chard. I can be cooking and eating and salads and things like that. I've got some more over here. That's growing well. I need to get some more of that started. You can see the bok choy is still edible, but it has went to seed as well. Some of them not as much as others. And then there's a few herbs that I keep in here all the time. So we've eaten a lot of lettuce out of this bed on the other side of this little jungle. It's pretty empty over there. Uh, but this little section just got out of control, went to seed. But the beautiful thing is it reseeded itself. So we will have lettuce again very soon. We've got a few heads throughout the greenhouse. So that is probably the final garden harvest, garden tour of the 2020 garden season. It's come to an end. I'm super glad it lasted as long as it did. I cannot believe, like I said, that tomorrow is December. That's so crazy to me. I'm so thankful. I love being outside. 
It's good for my mood. It's good for my soul. It's just, I, I'm just an outside girl. I don't like to sit inside all the time. I can do it for a bit and refresh and rest and recharge, but then I get to needing to be outside. So, so I'm glad that it lasted as long as it did. I want to encourage you guys, this is heading into the time of year that people start to find themselves getting a little down in the dumps, getting just a little, they call it sad, seasonal affective disorder or something like that. And there's a reason they call it that. I mean, it people do start to feel sad when there's a lot less daylight, there's a lot, the days are shorter, and then a lot of days are not sunny. This is a beautiful day even though it's freezing out here, it's still a beautiful day, but there's just not a lot of those this time of year. Um, and that just takes a toll on you after a while. So pay attention to yourself. I just encourage you, if you feel it coming, and I'm someone who can get a little bit down in the winter, but if you're like me, you feel it coming. There's signs and cues. So pay attention to those, be proactive. And one of my best, best remedies for it is get outside when you can. When it is a nice day, even if it's cold, sometimes it feels pretty good to breathe some cold, fresh air. Uh, bundle up, get out there, get a little sunshine if you can. And then also, one thing that makes me feel so good, I may not want to do it at the time, but it makes me feel so good, is get a little exercise. Go for a walk. I don't care if you can only walk for a few minutes. Get out there and get that heart to pump in. And um, like I said, just get some fresh air. That does me a world of good. If you can't do that, there's so many things you can do. Call someone. Don't fight it alone. Call and have a chat with someone. Make you something warm to drink. Pick up the phone. We don't pick up the phone near enough anymore. And, and tell people, hey, I'm not okay over here. Or, hey, I'm checking on you, are you okay? We're, we're pretty bad, myself included, to text because it's easier and it's convenient. But sometimes you just need to hear someone else's voice and you need to talk or maybe you need to listen. So um, just I just encourage you, don't just go down into the dark hole this winter. Don't do it, don't let yourself uh, there are people that care. Uh, you, maybe not everybody cares. You may have to look, and uh, but there are people. Most of us have at least somebody that cares and will listen. So I'd encourage you reach out. Um, be there if someone else reaches out. That's that's as equally important. So I'm signing off. I'm gonna take those radishes. I'm gonna tell you guys. Jess mentioned this from Roots and Refuge a few years ago about roasting radishes. And so that's my plan. I'm just gonna clean those up, dice them up, spritz them with some olive oil, salt and pepper, and roast them. You, I don't have a recipe. I just roast on whatever temperature I'm, I'm cooking on already. Uh, you can roast anywhere from 350, probably up to 450. Just keep an eye on them. Don't let them burn. And um, they're done when they're tender and when they're roasted. You've got to roast a certain amount of time to where they are browned and um, fully tender because that's when they will lose the hot peppery radish flavor that a lot of people don't care for. If you do, you can just go a short amount of time as you want, but you've got to go long enough um, if you don't for them to kind of mellow out and then they are so good. I encourage you, give it a try. I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks for hanging out with me outside. Take care of each other. Reach out to us if you need us to. We are here for you guys. We appreciate you so much watching our channel. Please subscribe if you haven't. Hit that bell. I also wanted to mention Berkey is still having a sale all the way to the 21st of December. So if you've been in the market for a Berkey, I promise you guys it's the best prices I have probably seen. Well, I know all year. And part of this year, you couldn't even get one no matter what you were willing to pay because they were out of stock. So check that out. Uh, there's a link in the description for that. And we'll see you guys on the next one. God bless. Best olive oil ever. And she is on YouTube, Squizito Tasting Room. I like this one a lot. This one and the butter. This is Tuscan Herb. It's infused olive oil. Catfish. And a fresh lemon. 
These are Meyer lemons and they're almost like oranges. Okay, I'm trying the wild mushroom and sage on the fish. It just hit me that that olive oil would make an awesome Christmas present. So I'm gonna find her channel and I think she probably has a website too. I'll try to find that for you guys because they are all types of delicious olive oils and all kinds of stuff. And she's super sweet. She's local to us. Um, and so I'm gonna link her below and then you guys can check it out if you're interested.